Chapter 4. Synthesis and Constraint Entry. In this section of the Radiant Introductory Training Series, the basic constraint creation flow using lattice radiant will be presented. Chapter 4 consists of five sections. In the first section of the chapter, called Constraint Basics, the general flow for constraint creation with radiant is discussed. In section 2 of the chapter, Creating LDC and SDC Constraints with Pre-Synthesis Timing Constraint Editor, Radiant's Pre-Synthesis Timing Constraint Editor is introduced, and how it can be used to create timing constraints. In Section 3 of Chapter 4, called Running Synthesis, Radiant's Task Detail View and Process Toolbar are discussed, as well as how they can be used to run the project flow for a Radiant project. In the fourth section of the chapter, Lattice Radiant Reports, we will discuss Radiant's generated reports. Finally, in the fifth section of the chapter, using Netlist Analyzer, we will introduce Radiance Netlist Analyzer and how it can be used to analyze a design synthesized netlist. Chapter 4, Section 4 Lattice Radiant Reports. In this section of the video series, we will be discussing Radiance generated reports and how to generate and view them. As users develop their projects, Radiant will generate several different types of reports for different steps in the process design flow. These generated reports can be observed using Radiant's Reports view. There are two ways Radiant's Reports view can be opened. The first way to open Radiant's Reports view is to select View from Radiant's menu bar and then select Reports from the drop-down that appears. The second way the Reports view can be opened is by selecting the Reports icon from Radiant's toolbar as can be seen from the figure on the slide. Once the reports view opens, users should see something similar to the figure on the slide. As can be seen from the figure, the reports view window contains several sections. In the right side of the window are the project summary and project resource usage sections. Depending on the active report, the content in this area will change. The other portion of the Reports View window is the Reports Browser. The Reports Browser organizes generated reports into several different sections, depending on the stage of the process flow. Selecting a report from the Reports Browser will open it in the main section of the window, replacing the Project Summary and Resource Usage sections. Now, as mentioned in the previous slide, the Reports Browser can be used to view the various types of generated reports. The reports in this area are organized into different sections, depending on the stage of the process flow the report was generated during. To view the reports generated for a stage of the process flow, select the section name from the Reports Browser. In the example on the slide, the Synthesis Reports section was expanded to view the various types of synthesis reports. A useful feature of the Reports Browser is that each report has a status icon indicating the status of that generated report. The first status icon is a blue checkmark which indicates that a report has been successfully generated and is up to date. The second status icon is a gray circle which indicates that a report has not been generated before. The third status icon is a orange question mark. This icon indicates that a report has been generated before for a project but is out of date and needs to be regenerated. Finally, the fourth status icon is an orange exclamation mark. This status icon indicates that there was an error found during the report. Now that we've discussed the basics of the reports browser, we are briefly going to cover some additional information regarding Radiance generated reports. Although many reports are generated by default, there are some reports that require additional configuration in Radiance Task Detail View in order to be generated. The first types of reports that require selections in the Task Detail View are Timing Analysis Reports. As can be seen from the figure on the slide, the Timing Analysis options must be enabled for each step of the project flow in order to generate a Timing Analysis Report for that stage. Timing Analysis Reports are useful, as they will assist users in understanding the timing of their project. By default, not all timing reports are enabled in Radiance Task Detail View, so users should know which reports they want to generate before running the project flow. The second type of report that requires selection to generate are IBIS models. To generate an IBIS model during the export file stage of the project flow, enable the IBIS model option in Radiance Task Detail View. 
If this option is enabled, users will be able to view a report of the generated IBIS model in Radiance Reports view. That concludes this section of the introductory training series. To view the next video in the chapter, select the video titled Section 4.5, using Netlist Analyzer.